Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Football 95. Bob Beeler along with Tom Gadd, the head coach of the Bucknell Bison. Today we'll take a look at uh, highlights of Saturday's 20-19 uh, to 19 loss to Penn and look ahead to Lehigh and vision with our special guests Rich Miller and John Sikowski. And coach, this 20-19 to 19 game was about as even as you could get without playing to a tie. The yardage was even. The way the game unfolded with the way turnovers happened and just the physicalness of play from a minute one to minute 60. I think it's what happens when two teams come out ready to play and uh, both want to win and both have enough physical weapons to win and uh, they won by one. What was it like on the sidelines? Was it, was it as intense as it seemed to be watching from yeah. the press box? Yeah, it was, it was really intense and, and I'm sure we'll get into talking about the decision to go for two points, but that was the reason I did it is because our kids felt like they were winning the physical battle and and or at least that was their impression and and I think that that decision was based a lot on the feeling on the sideline at the time. Let's take a look at highlights from the uh, first half. Penn would uh, have their best drive really coach their only drive of the day on their first possession. They take it 11 plays 70 yards and they turn it over. Well they did a nice job with their game plan. They came out and did some things against us that uh, they had seen in films and took our players uh, you know a drive like this to adjust and once we adjusted this particular pass or this misdirection we call him naked and they hit it a couple times in this first drive and then after that we stopped and finally ended up getting an interception off the same type play. You get an interception here, good coverage downfield and pretty good rush as well. George Juanis made a big play. Our secondary really rose to the challenge, uh, held him to a hundred yards passing and I think that they, uh, knowing that they had the All-American receiver and a great quarterback, uh, those kids really rose up and played well. Tough break here, Fox pressure from the backside, loses the handle on the ball and Really, when you give them the ball at the nine-yard line, it's uh, kind of difficult for them to the end zone. Yeah, we, we've uh, you know, started off slowly in a couple games now where we get down 7 nothing real early, and, and uh, we got to stop that. We gotta this, this is the play you're talking about, Adams with the tip, Willie Hill with the interception. Great play by Hunter, and Hunter is uh, foot five and got great arm reach, and, and uh, he tipped a couple during the day. And here we go in for the touchdown. Jeff Bombick will carry over from the one, and the score is even at 7-7. We're midway through the second quarter. And I've noticed this whole season, Bucknell has dominated the second quarter. Is, is it adjustments? Are there things that the team's doing that, that they're reacting to or taking before the half? Well, I think it's, you know, we, we probably do a pretty good job adjusting to what the other team comes out and starts doing to us. Uh, by the same token, we're not having done very well in the third quarter, so uh, uh, it's hard to explain why. Take a look at highlights a little bit uh, further along in the uh, second quarter. Again, the score is even at seven apiece. Uh, the defense played very well in the second quarter. Ed Berman will come up with a sack here, and then uh, your uh, special teams comes up with a turnover. It doesn't go in the books as a turnover, but it really is. Well, yeah, Josh Lebrecht uh, is going to uh, did a real nice job there on that sack. And then we get some pressure out. Eric Musi, a freshman, forces the bad kick and, and make the tackle there and set us up for a field goal. And it leads to Rich Miller's field goal, his uh, sixth of the season. He would have two on the game. And Bucknell would enjoy a 10 to 7 lead as we wind our way down to the second quarter. And Bucknell's defense would continue to play well against the run. Rob Bird with a the tackle there. And uh, Jim Fox is going to find uh, Steve Nothel. I just got a little ahead of myself as uh, Bucknell breaks up the pass. Masick had someone on him every time. Well, we rotated our coverage at him and tried to do some things, take him away. We knew he was a big threat. Steve Nothlin does a great job with getting yards after the catch. Six catches for 85 yards. Steve really has played well. Our receivers are, are you know, done a great job. I, I think it's indicative of the last three weeks the receiver's been our player of the week. And uh, Rich Lemon would carry for 63 yards in the game. Big eight-yard run here. And then play we don't have, uh, Jim Fox got shaken up. And tough call for a guy to have to come off the bench cold here, Mike Tomko. I thought Mike really did a nice job. He's, he's done a great job in practice keeping himself ready, and that's what we tell him. You never know when your turn's going to be up. This couldn't quite be handled by Steve Nofum, and it leads to another Rich Miller field goal, his second of the day. And Bucknell leading by six at the half in a very hotly contested first half, and one I think you probably had to go to the dressing room feeling pretty good about. Well, I, I thought that, again, like I did at Princeton, I thought that we had sort of taken the momentum of the game and then to lose it at the start of the third quarter is, is really disappointing. I mean, we need, need to get over that and uh, continue to press the issue like we were doing in the second quarter. But uh, I was proud of the kids' effort. They had uh, three catches for Masick right off the bat, nothing much in the second or third quarter. Did you do something to, uh, to keep it away from him? Well, again, we started rotating our coverage at him, and uh, we tried to contend his, contest his route at the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. rather than let him get downfield into the route as much as we could. He couldn't do it all the time, but, but that might have led to some of our success. This season, Bucknell is using game captains, giving different seniors a chance to uh, be the captain for a particular game. John McHenry takes a look at senior leadership on this report. 
Rob Berry came into the 1995 football season with a strong work ethic and intense leadership abilities to prove himself as a linebacker, as well as to help lead his team to a championship. We will talk to Rob about how he's prepared himself for this task. We had a program where the, you know, a couple of us that were here this summer, we all worked out together, you know, just as intensely as we did, you know, in the off season with the coaches here. And then we get together uh, two or three evenings a week, you know, as a group and run together, you know, that really, you know, made us push each other, you know, try to compete to get better and make each other better. So I think this summer, you know, we worked really hard and uh, took a lot of pride in getting ourselves in shape. You know. Rob explains that senior leadership for all seniors is an integral part of teaching younger players how to make the transition from high school football to college football. Coming out of high school and not knowing exactly what college football is all about, you know, it, it's it's kind of a new experience for the guys. And I think as seniors, we all, you know, have been there, you know, battle proven a little bit, some of us. You know, and like to, it, it, it's all about pride and, you know, confidence. We have to convey confidence to the guys that we've been there, we know what it's like, and, you know, us being out there playing, you know, helping these guys along, they either are playing with us or, or on the sidelines going to be waiting for their shot. So it's good to finally get a shot and, you know, to be a leader with this team. I think any senior on this team is going to tell you. So uh, Playing linebacker, I think you have to get yourself in a different kind of mindset than a lot of the other guys on the team. You have to get yourself, you know, a little bit more emotionally, you know, ready to play because it's a really physical, physical position. And I think in order to play up to the potential that you have to, you have to be at a whole other level where, you know, you got to push pain out of your mind and everything else, and you just got to go full throttle at all times. So, like, you know, pick guys up and, you know, make sure the huddles, you know, everyone's paying attention in the huddle, getting the calls in, and, you know, everybody's on the same emotional level as I am or else, you know, the defense isn't going to click. you got to have 11 guys all on the same page, all ready to play, and, you know, all being emotional. Defense is about emotions and intensity, and, you know, without that, then it just doesn't work. So I try and help, you know, the defense along as far as that's concerned. David Katulski, Rob's linebacker coach, tells us how Rob's intensity in leadership carries over on the other players. Very serious young man. He, you know, he's in engineering. He works hard in the classroom. He works hard in, uh, uh, on the field. And uh, that intensity is really something that, uh, uh, that carries over. The ball players uh, uh, feed off of him, and uh, he feeds off of the excitement from the other ball players. And I, I think he's having a good time uh, in, uh, playing, and, uh, and, and I've gotten to smile actually a few times on the field. I want them to say that I was a guy that gave this team everything that I had, you know. I want them, they're not going to know what, what I went through in the off season, working out and what we're put through as far as that's concerned, but I want them to know that I was an intense guy that, you know, played every play to win, you know, never gave up no matter what the score is, you know, always fighting for my team, you know, always willing to sacrifice and do what I had to to, to get our team the W. I want them to know that, that I, you know, I gave it everything. Thanks a lot, John and Coach. Uh, Rob is one of those seniors that has really stepped, for you, stepped up for you, and uh, you've got a lot of them on this roster this year. Well, we, we've sort of put it in the lap of the seniors to lead this football team, and, and uh, Rob's one of those young men who's made a great commitment, loves to play football, uh, stayed here in the summer, and really got himself in great shape, and, and, and all of our players respect him. I mean, he's, uh, he, he's not a real boisterous leader, but he leads by example, and they all know how serious he is about the game. Right now, we're going to pause for this timeout, then Tom and I'll be back to take a look at highlights of the second half. We'll be back after this. Finally, a food carrier designed to carry food. New Pyrex Portables. Thermal packs keep food hot or cold for hours. Pyrex Portables, the way to go. Since 1846, scholars have come together at Bucknell to ask questions and explore answers. Inspired by the fresh spirit of the newest student and the seasoned wisdom of the faculty, this meeting of minds fosters achievement. Bucknell professors enjoy national reputation, and Bucknell students are known for their intelligence. Their lively exchanges extend from classrooms and seminars to informal meetings in faculty offices and the campus snack bar. Bucknell is a comfortable place for the tradition of the classics and the demands of today's society. The arts, humanities, and sciences thrive alongside professional programs in engineering, education, management, and music. The environment for this growing diversity and the ongoing meeting of minds is a very beautiful campus in central Pennsylvania. Bucknell's stately buildings and beautiful trees and gardens provide an ideal collegiate setting. Bucknell, with 3,300 undergraduates and over 260 faculty members who sustain the spirit that is this university and who carry it with them throughout their lives. Finally, a food carrier designed to carry food. 
New Pyrex Portables. Thermal packs keep food cold or hot for hours. Pyrex Portables, the way to go. As we look at the second half, it was 13 to 7 in favor of Bucknell at the intermission. You're getting the football and a chance maybe to make something happen in a very tough break as we start the second half. Well, we had deferred at the start of the game. I, have, I will always do that if the win's not a major factor so that we can have the ball at the start of the third quarter and, and maybe change the uh, flow of the game and, and we turn it over. And that happens. I mean, their athletes drop one, we drop one. Was the sun a factor? Because it looked like both teams had trouble fielding kicks. I don't think the sun was a factor. I think that uh, Milton just wanted to do well and he was uh, really hyped up to take off with the football and took off where he caught it. Take a look at the highlights from the third quarter and then, of course, the big uh, fourth quarter situation where both teams were scrambling for points at the end. Here it is, a high sky at uh, Franklin Field, Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful day for football and didn't quite hang on to it. Penn recovers, and this time it's a 24-yard drive for a touchdown, and they'll take the lead. And again, uh, they didn't have to work too much for the two touchdowns. Well, and, and we had a free blitzer in the gap that he runs through, but uh, we didn't. It, our athlete overran it a little bit. Turnabout's fair play here as Penn will drop a punt. Rich Miller with a good 40-yard kick. Joshua Breck recovers, but really unable to do anything with it. Well, this was a big part of the game right here. I think we were in the, in, inside their 35-yard line several times and didn't come away with anything, and that's a credit to their defense. They play tough, hard nose. That's why they led the country in defense a year ago, and they're a good football team. But your defense, you have to be very pleased about. You're among the national leaders in total defense, I think, at uh, 16 or 17, playing good against the passing run. Well, our kids play hard. We, we, we can still improve. We, we do a few things technique-wise that aren't, aren't real good yet, and, and they will get better, but we, we have good kids, and they work real hard at it. Fox gaining confidence, and I think O.J. Perkins coming into his own. O.J. Perkins, like I said, our receiver core, I, I haven't seen a, a group of receivers yet I'd trade for the ones that we have. We, we have a good group. Perkins caught five passes for 52 yards. Fox was 17 of 35 for 195. Five sacks as uh, he was hit all day, and that, to me, makes it even more impressive. And uh, here, again, has trouble getting a punt off, and that was something we saw in the first half of 10 had trouble with. That was probably my fault. He was pretty tired by then, and he's our our short-range kicker, and I probably should have taken him out at that point in time, but he had been doing so well, I left him in. That's... Field goal will give Penn the lead now by 4-17-13. The play before that we didn't talk about, stopping Miles Masick short of the first down, I think was one of the unsung plays of the game because if they're able to get a touchdown, all of a sudden they're up eight instead of four. Yeah, we, uh, we, we stood up and made some plays right there when we had to, gave ourselves a chance to stay in the football game, and, and uh, luckily that we did. At what point did you think maybe things would start to switch back? Because late in the game, they got a nice drive going out to midfield before your defense went like that and shut them down. Well, I thought we had them pinned down there. And uh, I thought that uh, their drive at the end was, was part because they did a great job executing the part because our kids were starting to get tired. We were on the field a lot defensively. And, and, uh, but we rose up and we got them stopped. And, and we're pretty good in the last two minutes of every game we've played. Our, our offense takes the ball. I, probably the best thing we do is our two-minute drill. And, and uh, they made it produce again. Let's take a look after a couple first downs for Penn. They're out to midfield. We're going to see the three plays that uh, Bucknell is going to shut them out in. A couple against the run. Andy Doremus makes a nice play here. Well, Andy, Andy's going to start playing more and more. He's fresh, and, and that's sort of our philosophy is if you're fresh, you're going to play better than someone who's tired, and it's time to keep our kids rested. The double coverage there, Jackson and Miller. Masick comes down with nothing. Again, the secondary played really well. Uh, Willie Jackson really shows up to the challenge of, of playing against Masick. Now Bucknell's going to get the ball back, 2.52 to go, and uh, again, a picture-perfect two-minute drive. Well, if we did anything, we scored too quick. Um, you know, I, I still want to take the score, but uh, it would have been nice to have eliminated the clock. And, but. Third and 15 here, and I don't know how they didn't get you in Fox. He's a Lucy. Uh, this is our, this is our uh, main weapon in the running game now. Fox turned him loose. And then a couple of nice plays to pick up another first down and get you a little bit closer. Mike Phillips on a little crossing route, and then uh, Lemon's going to get a big first down on third and short. Well, Jim read the blitz on the play that he got the ball off the Fox, and he gets the first down. So that now we're starting to think about uh, punching this thing in, and, and uh, all of a sudden we get the big play here. John will be a guest a little later in the show, but I don't think I've ever seen a better catching person than that catch right there based on the catch itself, the time, and the situation. Well, I couldn't see it from where I was... Uh, standing and uh, looking at our copy of the films, it's hard to tell that he's got his feet down, but in this copy, uh, the television copy, you can really see he did a great job of dragging his toes and had both feet in. Now, Coach, two celebration penalties, one for the helmet and one for celebrating right here. I've never heard of that. 
Well, that's the new rule. We had uh, two athletes come off the bench area. One jumped in the pile, and another one came down with his helmet off, and they gave us a double foul. You go for two. Uh, I know your reasoning, and I, I can appreciate it, but I felt that they probably would have gone for the win, too, and maybe give them two chances to win instead of one it's or a just, touchdown. It's just they had all three of their timeouts. Our kids had played hard, and I wanted to make sure that they had to go for a touchdown because I knew they were going to be on a short field before we had to kick off. Masick with a nice catch there. You've got 39 seconds to go. It's third and 11 here, and uh, they're looking for the first down, and you're going to stop them short. Well, we stop them, and, and uh, now they have to make a decision. They decide to go for a field goal and take a kid who's never kicked one that far, and that's credit to the player that did it, and, and he hits it. I would think any situation, if you're the kicking team versus the team that's not kicking, that you have the advantage because you control the situation as opposed to the people trying to block it. Well, yeah, in order to block a, a field goal, you really have to have the offensive kicking team mess up, and uh, they didn't do it. Good kick coverage there by Penn. They got a celebration penalty, but only one kick off to the 20. I don't know how this was caught. Fox just looks like he throws it up for grabs and Nopu makes a great catch and gets out of bounds. Well, it's often the case. An underthrown pass is easier for the offense to come back on than it is for the defense. And right there, the interception that would seal it. And again, uh, if you'd had a timeout, you might have been a little bit less rushed, but uh, did a nice job, I thought, to get into their territory after with well, just a little time left. The, the pattern that he throws there is open. And he just overthrows. It gets a little too high. If he, if he hits Phillips where the route is, Phillips is going to go down inside around the 30-yard line, and we're going to have time to kick a field goal. But uh, it didn't happen. It was a little high. It was picked off. If you were a fan and just paid your money to come into that game, you had to be pleased that you got your money. Well, that was a great game. Well, I think probably from up in uh, the stands, it was a great game. It was a hard game on the field just because of the, the physicalness nature of it, the uh, uh, intensity of it, the fact that it was close all the way. You never felt comfortable that you had you know, the game won or lost either way. And, and uh, so it made, it made it a hard game to coach. We'll talk about Lehigh a little bit later in the show, but right now we'll pause for this time out and be back to talk with our special guests, Rich Miller and John Sikowski. This is Pat Farber with the wrap-up of the week in Bucknell Athletics. 4-0. That's the women's soccer team's Patriot League record after a huge victory over Army. Sophomore Lee Raymond scored the game winner against the Lady Knights. In men's soccer, the Bison split a pair of games. Tom Roller found the back of the net in overtime to knock off Delaware. The volleyball team went 2-1 on the week and is now 12-4. Emily Pomeroy had 22 kills in her team's three matches. The golf team placed fifth at the league championship, firing a 967 over the 54-hole event. Jeff Graff led the way for Tommy Thompson's team. On the hard courts, the BU women's tennis program won two of three matches, while the field hockey team recorded a 1-0 victory over defending league champ Lehigh Sunday. Six straight wins for the water polo team has pulled it back to 500. Bucknell swept the competition at the Mid-Atlantic League game Saturday. And in cross country, the men and women both fared well in New Hampshire. Dave Granger finished second individually for the men's team, now 9-0. That's your Bison Weekend Review. Finally, a food carrier designed to carry food. New Pyrex Portables. Thermal packs keep food hot or cold for hours. Pyrex Portables, the way to go. Taking a look at Bucknell alumni events, the Bucknell Club of Washington, D.C. will host a president's reception so you can meet Dr. Adams. That'll be at the Willard Intercontinental. There'll be a tailgate party preceding the Bucknell Cornell football game on Saturday, October 14th. That'll be a Tower Road lot at Cornell from 11 to 1. The Bucknell Club of Denver will have a happy hour and brewery tour at the Rockies Brewing Company at Coors Field. Call for more details. President Adams will be at the Bucknell Club of Boston. That'll be the president's reception. Please RSVP to 717-524-3223. And the Bucknell Club of Washington, D.C. will be having a happy hour at Rumors. That's at 19th M Street in Washington, D.C. And finally, the Bucknell Club of Central Ohio will be having a Southwestern cooking class. That'll be on Friday, October 20th in Upper Arlington, Ohio. Finally, a food carrier designed to carry food. New Pyrex Portables. Thermal packs keep food cold or hot for hours. Pyrex Portables, the way to go. Welcome back to Bucknell Football 95. Two guys that have been mainstays of this Bison team in 95. Kicker, punter, Rich Miller, a junior on this team, and senior wide receiver John Sikowski, who we saw that catch a moment ago. And Rich, this season, seven field goals, uh, 
seven out of ten outstanding percentage. It looks like you're kicking with a lot more confidence this year. Is uh, something different in, in your kicking or just experience? I really haven't changed anything. I've uh, been successful so far, and every time I go out there and make another kick, I gain more confidence. We see you in multiple duties as a punter and a kicker. A lot of teams don't do that. Is that something you enjoy? I enjoyed it. It uh, keeps me in the game more, keeps me more active, and I'm in the game a lot more mentally. Do you have one area you enjoy more than another? I mean, is it more fun putting points on the board? Yeah, it's a lot more fun scoring, uh, but I think I'm, I've done well in both areas this year. John, one of the areas that I think is underrated for a receiver that I think our, our receiving court does a pretty good job on is blocking. I think I noticed you on the Jim Fox scramble. Uh, getting downfield and doing something. Is that something you guys take pride in? Uh, yeah, that's a big part of what we do. Uh, I think a couple of us, I think Mike and then uh, OJ and Steve each got blocked too, and I think that's why Jim was so successful on the run. And if we get blocked downfield, that will make uh, Richie's runs that much longer. So. You mentioned some other names, and Tom is talking about this core. I don't know that there's anybody that you can really hone in on and say, like, this is the guy we got to shut down, because if they shut you down, then there's three or four other people that yeah. may come up with catch. We have, we have a five guys, actually, with Ronnie. Ronnie's coming along nice. Who, who can play and get the job done, and it makes it difficult for the defense. They have to defend the whole field. They can't just defend uh, me or Steve or, or Mike or OJ. How does your role change when there's different sets? So sometimes you'll see two wide receivers, sometimes three, and sometimes four. Does it change what you try to do? Uh, well, sometimes I'll go from uh, being on the outside to, to, to being a slot receiver, and when I'm in the slot receiver, it's more inside routes and, and occupying linebackers, trying to open something up for Rich come across the middle. And uh, then when I'm outside, it's mostly uh, quick quick slants, quick hitches, or, or something deep, actually. Got some highlights to take a look at for these guys. Uh, let's take a look, first of all, at Rich Miller uh, making a field goal against Penn, about 40 yards. Uh, Rich, tell us what happens when you go out there and what you're trying to do. Well, first of all, I'm trying to find the spot on the field, seven yards behind the center, and uh, show John that spot. He's my holder. And I'm thinking this kick here gives us the lead, and with our defense, that's a big kick. And when do you decide to move forward with your, with your uh, step to um, make the kick? About as soon as John's left hand leaves the turf. Holding difficult, John? Uh, no, actually, it's, it's not that bad. Cal's doing a good job snapping, putting the ball back there. And all I have to do is catch it and put it down, lean it towards me, and, and Rich can do it. <laughs> and Rich, so there's a lot more to it than just getting up and kicking. You need guys to block for you as well, and then Cal and, uh, and John have to execute too. Yeah, like John said, uh, blocking's been great so far, and Cal's done a real good job. And John's also done a great job. Easier the second year or, or a couple of years working with somebody? You, you more on the same page? Well, so far I've got to work with Rob Glass the first two years, and this is for John's first okay. year, but we've worked enough at it in practice so far that's gotten a lot better. Now we get to take a look at uh, John's catches through uh, John's words. Uh, the big catch to uh, put Bucknell ahead late in, the, late in the ball game. Here it comes, John. What happened? Uh, this is just uh, four deep, and uh, Jim just picks the guy he wants to go to. Uh, we were all man-to-man, -man basically, so he's going to go to the outside receiver. Uh, I gave my guy a little stutter, and then once Jim put the ball up in the air, I, I think I was a step or two in front of him and just laid out for it. And I thought I was out of bounds, but I, I dragged my feet, and I guess they were in. So You were definitely in. <laughs> Obviously, your best catch? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> my, that was only my second catch of the game, and I was glad to get that catch because I really didn't feel, besides blocking, I was contributing that much. but. I was glad to get that and help the team. So. You've had a lot of big yardage catches in your career. Yeah, uh, I usually don't catch, I don't know why, for some reason I don't catch this, the, the short balls, but that's all right with me. Just a few seconds to go. With uh, John, you're a senior. We found out one of the things you're interested in, you love to fly. Yeah, I took a few lessons in high school. Uh, my major is economics, but uh, hopefully I'll get a job at a, at a college or something and then uh, eventually work my way into piloting somehow. Well, you've got the takeoff and landing down <laughs> on that place, so congratulations. So Rich, your junior will be back one more year. What are you majoring in? Uh, I'm a geology major with a concentration in environmental geology. Um, I hope to go on to grad school and possibly get my teaching degree and go into coaching and teaching. Well, Rich, thanks for being with us. John, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Rich Miller, John Sikowski, our guest. Tom and I will be back to close up the show after this timeout. Bucknell Football 95 is sponsored by Corning Incorporated. Corning, who provides catalytic converters for your car, optical fiber for your voice, video, and data communications, and cookware for your home, is an enthusiastic supporter of Bucknell students, faculty, and staff who are committed to excellence both on and off the football field. Corning Incorporated is a diversified products and services company with a strong commitment to technological excellence and innovation. Hi, I'm Rick Hartzell, Director of Athletics at Bucknell University. 
Bucknell has a well-documented and unmatched legacy of success in combining quality academics with competitive Division I athletics. Our record of academic All-Americans, Patriot League scholar athletes, and student athletes who make our dean's list is exemplary. In addition, our 26 men's and women's teams are successful on the courts, fields, and in the pool, winning three consecutive Patriot League President's Cups and two men's and two women's all-sports championships over the past five years. I would invite you to join our winning team by contributing to the Bison Club. The Bison Club is the fundraising arm of our athletic department, which supports all 26 Division I intercollegiate programs. In the past year, we have 2,700 members and over $500,000 raised. The Bison Club members have become a vital and integral part of our success. Join now and help support the legacy of excellence, which is Bucknell Athletics. For more information, write to the Bison Club in care of Bucknell University or call 717-524-1358. Big game this week on tap, Patriot League game, the two 1-0 teams, Bucknell and Lehigh and Coach. I'm going to go out on a limb. I think the winner of this game probably wins the league championship or certainly has the inside track. Well, it's, it's, it's a big game because whoever wins, it's up 2-0. And I don't know if that uh, precludes the other teams winning the championship, but uh, it's a big game for us. It's a homecoming game. We haven't been at home for three weeks and finally get to wear our blue jersey. So uh, we need to come out and play well. What do you like about Lehigh? What, what are they tough at? Well, I think they're really a explosive offensive team. The Klingerman at wide receiver and, and uh, Abdullah at running back and the quarterback ails with. Those kids are all able to go the distance at any time. And that really scares you because you can be going along and playing pretty well and all of a sudden they're in the end zone with one or two plays. And so we're going to have to really pick it up on defense and, and keep them contained. Your defense has been up to the task uh, throughout the year. They've, they've done a great job again in the top 20 all season. Tom, thanks for being with us today. Uh, we'll look forward to looking at the Lehigh highlights next week. Thanks, Bob. For head coach Tom Gadd and our special guests, kicker Rich Miller and wide receiver John Sikowski, this is Bob Beeler speaking, saying thanks for watching and tune in again next week to another edition of Bucknell Football, same time, same station. Good night, everybody.